It's really an honor and a pleasure to be here today and have the chance to talk about this report, Branches from the Same Tree, which was the product of, uh, of two years of toiling away and examining the evidence, looking at the impact of courses and programs that really mutually integrate the arts and humanities, the science, engineering, and medicine in higher education, and understanding the impact of these programs on students. And so I, I want to um, frame my presentation today in terms of we see the report as the first step in our work. So, so the report provides this evidence-based assessment of the impact of these programs on students. The second phase of our work is going to um, focus on uh, highlighting the outcomes of the report, what the committee found, and also uh, working with institutions to think about how to implement the committee's findings and recommendations on their campuses. And so sometimes we like to, um, to pursue our work by thinking about the kinds of scenarios that faculty members sometimes find themselves in. Um, you know, being a faculty member is really great. And one of the things that I never have to worry about as a faculty member is uh, wearing a suit. So I think I'll get rid of this suit jacket. I think uh, the fall is one of the best times to be on a university campus. The leaves are changing colors. The students are back. You can hear the synapses crackling in the air as the learning begins. But, you know, there's a lot to do this semester. Really, I, I gotta get organized here. All right, first I gotta uh, write my grant application. Very important, oh my gosh. Seems like it never ends. Submit publication to science. Very important. Or nature. <laughs> All right, what else? What else? What else? Uh, uh, yes, come in. Serve on Professor Bear. Oh my gosh, Maria? How's it going? It's How's been it going? Forever. It's so good to see you. What has it been like? Five years since your dissertation events? Probably a, a few more than that. All right, come on in, come in. Have a seat. I want to hear all about how everything's going with your new <laughs> company and your. Uh, oh, yeah, pull up a chair. It's a mess in here. I'm it's, sorry. It's, I'm it's sorry. Okay. It's Can okay. I get you a cup of coffee? It's, nothing seems to have changed. Uh, <laughs> still, still going with everything? You know the way it is. Yeah, right? yeah. But yeah, it is I, great to see you. What brings you to campus? So I, I'm here giving a, a talk for career services. They wanted me to uh, talk about how I turned my PhD and how bumblebees got their stripes into the next disruption in personalized medicine. How, how did you do that, Maria? It's so great to see you pursuing this alternative career in biotech. You know, we don't really call them alternative careers. They're just careers. I know you know the statistics about uh, career paths in academia these days. I do, I do. You have to understand, though. You know, when I was coming up, I, I really looked to my advisor who was helping to you know, lead me into the professoriate. It, it's, you know, no, but I do. Owning, I fully owning your own company is fairly rewarding. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. I no, no, you know, criticism. I think it's wonderful what you're doing. Really wonderful. Um, you know, speaking of alternative careers, careers. Uh, I mean, careers. Um, you know, about a year ago, I wrote a letter of recommendation for one of my recent doctoral students, Sandra. Um, yeah, yeah. Did that work out? I, I never heard. Yeah, no, no. She she uh, she joined in. Um, we've got her on one of the lines. She's doing very well. She uh, follows protocol to a T. I am not surprised to hear yeah, that. No. She was great, a great with the PCR monster. Yeah. I mean, wow. The reproducibility of her data was just like impeccable. Yeah. But uh, I'm getting the sense that mm, maybe you have some hesitation. Well, I'm um, coming from your lab. I. I would have expected more. I, I, I assumed that I could put her on as a team lead, but she just, she doesn't have the teamwork that I was expecting. Well, Maria, I mean, you remember what it's like when you're getting a PhD. It's a very individualistic kind of independent process. I mean. Yeah, and her, her team managers right now, they tell me she's mostly sitting on the line, working by herself. They ask her for updates. She gives them a ream of almost raw data. She has no, no aesthetic in her communications. Okay, but Maria, you have to understand, not everyone needs to be able to do a TED Talk like you. I'm not expecting a TED Talk. I'm expecting clean layouts in my PowerPoint, in her PowerPoints. Well, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, what do you, what do you expect? I mean, what do you want? 
What should we be doing for these PhD students? Remember, remember when I was having trouble with my TA in grad school? And you told me to take the improv class. I do. I do. You know, I, I know we talked about it at the time, but taking improv really, really helped me to better lecture to the students, to better empathize with my audience, you know, be adaptable, to, to hone my communication. Exactly. Exactly. I'm so glad that benefited you as well. Right. I, I learned so much about making sure that I could switch things up on the fly, that I could engage with whoever was sitting in front of me. But are you saying that Sandra needs an improv class? That's yes. Ridiculous. I'm saying that we should engage that those improv skills in the science classrooms. Make sure that you're able to develop those communication and, 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 and critical thinking skills that happen when you're in improv. Well, okay. So like um, when you were in grad school, you had that whole short course, the, what was it, uh, Biology of Aliens. Oh my gosh, the biology of aliens. Those aliens movies, I mean, they did kind of go downhill with like Aliens 3 and 4. But Alien and Aliens with Sigourney mm -hmm. Weaver, those were such amazing movies. Like aliens whoops, popping out of their chest. You know, what was so rewarding about teaching that class, and I think the students really liked it, is that, you know, we could learn about the science of parasitoid wasps while we learned about the aliens. And in a sense, we, we learned about film while we were learning about science, and, and the students were engaged. and. Exactly. I actually think some of them decided to pursue biology because of that class. Exactly. You get it. We need more of that. More, more, more biology of aliens courses? Well, I mean, maybe not exactly that course. It's a little bit dated at this point, but, you know, it's we need... It's a classic, Maria. A classic. Sure. Uh, we need more, more pulling in the film into the science courses, more, more arts in the science, hmm. more humanities, more ethics in science. Well, okay, let me stop you right there. We do take ethics seriously. I mean, we have an online module that all the graduate students take on responsible conduct of research. They mm -hmm. learn about plagiarism, they learn about falsification of data, mm -hmm. they learn about ethical treatment of research animals. I mean, yeah. isn't and that what you're talking about? Apparently it's not enough, or the proposal that Sandra tried to put forward on my desk would have had a little bit more thought of the privacy implications. Ooh, privacy. It seems like every day on the news there's something about privacy. Facebook, Google+. Personalized medicine. Yeah, okay. I see your point. I see your point. All right. Well, but I mean, like, what's your advice? I mean, how would we even move forward with this? You know the National Academies. Of course I know the National Academies. They're the premier institution for offering <laughs> science advice. Right. You know, my advisor was a National Academies member. He was? And he went on to win a Nobel Prize. There you go. Yeah. Right? So you would trust what they say? Oh, indubitably. So the other day, scrolling through Facebook, saw a post that David Scorton had. Oh, David Scorton. He was the president of Cornell? Yes, and then he became the uh, Smithsonian leader. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So he chaired this study on uh, integrating the arts and humanities with uh, science, engineering, medicine, called Branches from the Same Tree, uh, that Einstein quote about Einstein. religion and arts and science. Oh yeah. oh, yeah, here it is. Einstein once said, all religions, arts, and sciences are Branches from the same tree. That's the one. It's very poetic. In any case, it talks about do, how like courses that. like that bring everything together, that pull from different engagement, they, they're the ones that develop the critical thinking skills that I'm talking about, those communication skills, the teamwork skills that employers like me are looking for, that we're searching out right, in right. our new hires. Maria, like, I appreciate that. And I, no disrespect to the National Academies, but... Mm. And I know you've been outside of academia for a while, so you maybe don't realize it, but this seems a little naive. There are so many administrative barriers to this kind of thing, so many structural impediments. I mean, think about it. The university is really siloed. The, the you know, science department's over here, the arts department's over there. I don't even know anyone in the arts department. You know, the history department is on like the completely other campus. We have to think of, I mean, come on. I am, I'm the Simon A. Baerbach Endowed Chair and Distinguished Professor in Biology. Biology is what I know. Biology, I, I have a responsibility to my students to, you know, give them the best preparation in biology. And, um, you know, how are they no going to be offense right? to whoa, you. Whoa, 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 whoa. But also, I mean, think about it. If they're being trained in this interdisciplinary stuff, especially if you think at the graduate level, they're not going to find a job. Who's going to hire them? I will hire them. Hmm. And no offense to you, but a deep core training in biology is not enough. If you want your students to actually shine, you have to be able to give them the critical thinking skills, the communication skills, all of the skills that they lay out in this report. And if you're worried about how to overcome the barriers, they 
talk about the barriers. Those are legitimate things to be thinking about. The yeah, siloing is important. The financial barriers, they go through that and they give you examples. Hmm. Examples of how other institutions have actually implemented different courses, different programs, different ways of overcoming aspects that you're thinking about right now. But I mean, are any of these programs at other schools, are, are those schools really like the University of Prestige? <sighs> so, don't bite my head off, but last week I went to State U. State U, our rivals, we just beat them in basketball. Go Octopi! Octopuses. <laughs> octopus. Octopus. It's, 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 octopi. it's octopuses. Oh, jeez. We need to change the mascot. In any case. I went there because they were going to talk about this report. The, uh, the study director, Ash, Ashley something. You'd like her. She's a great girl. Yeah. Um, I don't know. She, she's holding these, this series of, of town halls, going around to institutions like state I just, and uh, bringing together people from different areas, different disciplines, having them choose or talk about different programs that they might be able to implement, talk about the barriers, Figure out state you exactly. Wow. If we're ever going to get President Smith on board, point to the fact that state U is already doing this. Yeah, she's not going to be happy if they're doing innovative things that we're not doing. Right. It's a good point. It's a good point. What if? Bear with me. What if I got Smith and the study director and you and me all together? Maybe a conference call, set it up. I guess it's worth a conversation. All right. You wouldn't mind uh, setting it up? Oh, no, I'll get my assistant to do it. We can figure this That's out. That's your assistant. You're such a big shot now, Maria. Well, it comes with the job. All right. Well, let's give it a shot, and we'll see if we can overcome these barriers. Yeah, we can figure this out. We can do this. All right. Thanks for coming back. Oh, it was so great to see you. I'm really happy I had the time. <laughs> OK. And scene. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Maria. <laughs> So we're probably almost out of time, and we'll have some time for dialogue. But we just we wanted to do something um, that in this skit that was sort of um, an embodiment of what the report's about, which is about thinking about new ways to communicate and what students need. Um, and I want to thank Maria Dahlberg uh, from the bottom of my heart for <laughs> doing this with me, and um, and I look forward to the discussion. Thanks very much. <laughs>